Renewable clean energy in pursuit of a green global economy has been on the international agenda for some years. And when big industries like mining consume massive amounts of polluting energy, time is certainly running out to shift the talk of the green economy from a fad to a tangible reality. The South African context complicates the scenario where regular load shedding and slow development of new energy provisions has threatened the viability of mining projects. One energy solutions company determined to assist is Ensight. The 12 year old Australian company began by completing energy audit reports for large electricity consumers. Upon arrival in South Africa, however, it changed its model from just writing the reports to implementing the changes from within the organizations to reduce energy costs and carbon output. We target companies that are the biggest energy users on the entire planet. The ones who are the elephants in the room, as it were. These are companies that use a lot of energy to produce their products. And the more energy they use, the more complex their business, the more we like the challenge. We're talking here about businesses that generally use more than 500 million rand a year in their business. In fact, we're working for businesses that are using over 1.5 billion rand in energy every year. So for them, energy is a big cost of their business. And our aim is to reduce that cost, while at the same time, improving their environmental outcomes. Reducing energy demand and carbon footprints are twinned imperatives that demand smart innovations. And to prove its confidence, the company says it only gets paid as a percentage of the savings achieved for clients. The people we employ in our business are primarily qualified as engineers. But what we really prize are people who can solve problems, who are clear thinkers, who can analyse issues and look at things with an open mind. It's not just engineering skills that are required. We need to be able to work with people because ultimately the businesses we work for save their energy by changing the way they operate. So we not only have to find what the technical solutions are, we have to help those businesses change their practices. Africa, why did you come to South Africa to start the business? Well, South Africa provides an excellent opportunity for us. There is a perfect storm happening here when it comes to energy costs for business and the challenges of the businesses we work for, businesses in commodities and energy. So give me an example. We're talking mining, we're talking oil, we're talking gas. Yes, these are the big energy users in the world. They are oil and gas, mining, chemicals, steel manufacturing, aluminium smelting. These are the biggest energy users in the world and our job is to help them reduce their carbon emissions and do it at a profit. Okay, and this wouldn't be a factor if energy wasn't, let's say, a big cost factor in the mining process. You know, you sent me some results that I looked at that were really interesting. And I think, was it dropped from 2011 to 2015, the cost of energy against the cost of copper per tonne mined or ored, whatever the right terminology might be there, has risen tremendously. What, was, what were the statistics? Yeah, that ratio has almost trebled. In other words, the proportion of energy cost for every tonne of ore mined and produced has trebled in the last four or five years. In the last four or five years alone. And on top of it, the price of the commodities are uncertain, unstable. Mines are getting deep in South Africa. They're becoming more expensive to mine. That's the perfect storm we're talking about here. It is indeed. With so what do, you, what do you do in the perfect storm, Rod? Well, in the perfect storm, you seize opportunity. Mm -hmm. And we seized opportunity here in South Africa, identifying that there were companies under pressure from declining commodity prices globally, but also having escalating costs, especially their energy costs, which can be anywhere between 15 and 30% of their total business costs. Oh, that's massive that provides a real opportunity to support those businesses in these tough times. So what do you do? Do you come in with some great technology, implement the technology and there the cost savings are made? Well in fact we're technology neutral. What we're interested in doing is showing these businesses how even with their existing technology they can transform the way they operate mm -hmm. to save energy and save costs. And we do that by bringing a team on site and working alongside their own people 
showing them how they can identify the real costs of energy in their business and then changing the way they operate the business to reduce those costs. Okay, so then in that instance, the first thing you work with is the people. It's a people process oriented activity. Once you've dealt with that and you've created new behaviors, new patterns of working, new patterns of integration between, let's say, various parts of the value chain in the mining process, do you then look at the technology? Indeed. So by getting the business operating efficiently using their existing or improved processes, we can then retrofit new technologies, new equipment that will add even further benefits and save them even more money. We can get between 10 and 15 percent savings on the energy bills of some of these businesses. Energy bills that are up to 150, start that again. We can get energy savings of up to 10 and 15 percent on the energy bills of some of these businesses. Some of these businesses have bills of one and a half billion rand a year. That's a significant saving. The, do you also integrate then with ESCOM? There are a lot of opportunities, rebate, rebate systems, rebate structures. Is that the third component that you bring into play? We do facilitate assistance that ESCOM provides for these businesses to change and reduce demand on the grid. We know that ESCOM is under enormous pressure and we're working very closely with them to help relieve that pressure on their grid so that they can free up supply for communities of South Africa by reducing the demand of these big energy consumers. Who do you sell to, Rod, when you sell your service? We usually work with the management teams of these big companies. We need to make sure those management teams are well and truly involved in our program, have buy-in, and that they see that this is a management program to improve the performance of their business, not just an energy saving program. But I'm sure at the end of the day, you know, people can always talk about kilowatt savings, kilowatt savings. It's a rands and cents savings that really you are communicating. Well, that's exactly right. We have engineers who work on the kilowatts and megawatts, but what management need to see is the RAND savings that the savings of energy deliver. And what we're finding is by saving energy, we're also identifying other efficiencies in the business, in logistics, in transport, and in a whole range of ways that can improve the performance of the business beyond just the reduction in the energy costs. Okay, and what really makes you different? Because consultants come on board, consultants provide you with research reports, big fat factor documents, consultants get paid, and then implementation is left where? How do you price your service, right? Well, our model is fundamentally different. As you know, our focus is a management focus on the costs of running their business. We use energy as a proxy for inefficiency. If we can find any inefficiencies in that business in the way that energy identifies, we will save that business money. And our model is to be paid on performance. We only get paid our profit if we save them money. Okay, so you really have to eat your own breakfast. It's a true, true commitment to whether you can or can't. It must be a model that you look at quite carefully before you risk working with the customer. We're confident that in most of these big energy consuming operations, we can save them significant money. Excellent.